This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, uh, everyone in the program, for uh, uh, daring to get out of the sun on a Friday afternoon uh, when the surf is over three feet. So it, uh, it, it took a lot of courage to, uh, to have a meeting uh, on a day like today, especially since we've just had the, sort of the cleansing bath of a four inch of rain. So uh, what I want to talk about uh, today are some innovations that are happening here on campus, some innovations that are happening uh, elsewhere that will impact the campus. And uh, just the, the, you know, sort of take the pulse of where we are in, in a lot of uh, uh, where digital media is going to be uh, changing how uh, academics works. And uh, you know, we're all part of this thing called the academy. And as soon as you're, is anyone a freshman here? No freshman, okay. Well, as soon as you like enter the campus, you join this sort of larger group called, at some level, the academy. And the academy has its, its own long history of innovation um, you know, the, really the, the, the last huge innovation maybe for the Academy was in 1660 when they founded the Royal Society. Um, and it was hugely innovative because the uh, Royal Society set up uh, the first uh, uh, basic social network for uh, scientists and uh, the first uh, peer-reviewed journal for scientists. And they, uh, they really broke with the history of, uh, of how knowledge was accepted uh, with their, uh, their motto is nolius in verba, which basically says it's not in the words that you find truth, it's, it's in the process, it's in the scientific method, it's in you know, this uh, reproducible act of doing science is, is where you find the truth. Um, so for the last 350 years, um, the, the Academy has done fairly well with this model. Um, but uh, times are changing, and it, I think it's time that we start looking ahead uh, to uh, sort of redoing uh, where the academy uh, spends its, uh, um, its communication dollars in, in a variety of resources. And I think uh, the Digital Ocean uh, effort, uh, which is based here at UCSB, um, uh, is one prime example of trying to push or drag or in other ways, uh, uh, you know, uh, show the opportunities of social media and social networking as vehicles uh, for the communication of science, uh, vehicles for scientists to uh, uh, co uh, coordinate and collaborate and then to uh, uh, get their message out uh, to the public. So DigitalOcean is actually several joined projects and we're going to hear about a couple of them. Uh, at some level, it's also a technology layer. I don't know if there are any computer scientists here, but we're, we're building out uh, social networking capabilities in an, an open source CMS called Drupal. And uh, so we're, uh, we're actually working on some fairly uh, innovative uh, uh, social side of uh, modules for Drupal and also bringing in advanced media handling uh, for Drupal. Now, what we want to do with the social network in terms of, of, of scientists, and we're starting with ocean science. It's just a, sort of the first model of a multi-disciplinary uh, uh, scientific endeavor. Uh, you know, the study of the ocean is uh, uh, it's, uh, not only interdisciplinary, it's, it's uh, international, it's, it's global, uh, it includes a wide number of the sciences from, you know, physics to uh, uh, biology and, and uh, geology and lots of other uh, sciences. 
So we're going to create a network, a social network, an invitation-only uh, social network that scientists can join and invite their friends. We're going to offer uh, preprint services. Uh, if you're a physics uh, uh, graduate or a, a professor here, you know the, the archive where there are preprint services. In uh, uh, the medical professions, there are preprint services. So we're going to extend that to the earth sciences and um, um, through a, a, a partnership with Nature in uh, London. At the same time, we're also going to offer a, a job board, uh, again, through uh, Nature Publishing. And we'll, ha we'll have this as a, a place where you can store and uh, maintain and, uh, and tag and label and license uh, photographs and videos, and at some point even uh, into data sets and other resources. And then since it's a place that you have open every day on your computer, we're going to uh, help you to find the resources that are out there that are pertinent to your uh, research interests uh, through uh, streaming feeds of, uh, of science uh, uh, information from uh, uh, research publications, open, open access research publications, and others that have RSS and Atom feeds. Now, you know, I, probably most of the people here are uh, familiar with Facebook, so in some ways, uh, this is like Facebook for uh, sciences. So uh, we'll, we'll do some of the same things you can do in Facebook, uh, but uh, we're going to bring professional uh, level services to this. Um, for example, uh, if you're going to apply for NSF funding or if you have applied for NSF funding, you realize how, how uh, much effort it takes just to do your biosketch. So we're going to automate the biosketch as part of your profile, um, and if you just keep your profile up to date, uh, you can output the, the two-page NSF file sketch directly from the program. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at how to collect better metrics from the content that's put into the system. So if you have an NSF project and you connect through the system to other sciences, uh, scientists um, or to their uh, uh, constituents, uh, you can pull back metrics that you can send back to the NSF. And so that's, uh, it, the service then becomes, uh, you know, an, uh, an opportunity for you to better uh, serve the NSF and, and in turn get uh, additional funding uh, because of that. So it's a combination of, of people and content and visual tools and other, uh, other opportunities that we're putting together for DigitalOcean. And right now, uh, we're in the... Uh, uh, alpha stage of completing the software platform. We're going to get alpha users to test it out. Um, then we'll, we'll do some beta testing and we'll release it to the world uh, probably in months uh, as the, the basic level platform. Uh, so here's a quick look at uh, uh, the very, very first mock-up of what uh, the profile page would look like in DigitalOcean. Another part of DigitalOcean um, involves social networking, social media, uh, uh, in uh, K to 12 learning, um, basically though, in, in middle school is our target for this. Uh, and we had the idea that uh, there are huge issues in, on the planet. And one of them is the sustainability of uh, ocean resources, particularly food resources. Uh, um, uh, these resources supply about 20% of the protein for the planet. So uh, uh, if they go away, it's, it's a huge problem. So we're, uh, we're interested in seeing how uh, students in, uh, in classrooms can uh, gather data on the, the fish and the other seafoods that are available in their towns, uh, contribute this data to a shared database, and uh, we'll feed back the data uh, uh, to them uh, on Google Earth. And we'll also connect their data to information that uh, we have on uh, the sustainability of the fisheries in the ocean. And so they start seeing how their lifestyle choices and their consumption choices are contingent on the uh, practices of the people uh, gathering the fish in, in the ocean. And how uh, this, this sort of ecology and economy of, of eating seafood is all connected globally. We're also going to let them uh, take photographs and share uh, uh, messages and uh, comments and emails and blogs through a system called ePals which is a partner in this. Um, so uh, we're expecting a really lively uh, combination of, of actual sort of in-class uh, data collection and more informal uh, social network 
uh, uh, media production. A third uh, project we have, and this is based on the, uh, the platform, is to take the DigitalOcean platform and use it to uh, help aggregate uh, media content, high quality, well vetted uh, uh, media content, fully licensed for use in uh, informal science organizations like museums, aquariums, uh, science centers. And so we're working on a uh, proposal right now through the NSF in their informal science education, um, and this will be going out next month. Uh, we have, uh, you know, reasonable expectation of, uh, of being competitive in this, and this would be a five-year project that would involve basically the, the major uh, uh, museums and aquariums in the country uh, coming together uh, with uh, top ocean scientists to uh, share media and develop stories and information that they can use uh, uh, that's very competitive uh, financially so they can, uh, uh, they can use it and reuse it uh, in the future. Now some of the, some of the information that's uh, informed what we're doing here uh, comes from a variety of sources that are not necessarily from uh, the Academy. But I think uh, what we're seeing in the information world is that uh, there are, uh, there are sort of leading uh, organizations and, and activities uh, outside the Academy in terms of social media and social networking and people talking about these. Of course, Clay Shirky, I think, is at uh, NYU. Is he at NYU? I'm not sure where, if he's got a position. But so uh, there's, these are three books, I think, that, uh, that are of value to anyone who's looking at social media and social networking. Clay, uh, Clay Shirky's Here Comes Everybody, which really talks about uh, the growing sort of crowdsource revolution, where you can do things with a crowd that you could never do uh, if you try to pay experts or other people to do it. And the crowd is actually going to do things uh, to you or for you, uh, you know, if, if you want it or not. The Wolfie Factor uh, is, this is Tara Hunt, uh, a blogger from Silicon Valley, who's uh, really talking about uh, reputation systems um, in business and how do you build and maintain uh, reputation and what does that look like. Um, and then trust agents, uh, Chris Brogan and Julian Smith, uh, talks about taking the reputation you've built and using it strategically uh, to build your business and, and uh, what it takes to, uh, uh, to build trust, and maintain trust uh, uh, with uh, customers, uh, with communities, uh, and, and with a variety of uh, people that you're, you're interacting with. So there's sort of a, a sort of cyclical, you know, uh, uh, process in all this. We, we build the code uh, that, uh, uh, that's like social networking code that uh, opens up opportunities, enables community interactions, enables the community to coalesce. Um, so there's that sort of Facebook, uh, MySpace kind of, you know, if we build it and uh, they like it, uh, you know, then, then things will happen. Uh, so you have an emergent community built inside a coded environment. And then the community supplies the content. Okay, that's the whole point, really, is that we're not paying people to come up and provide content anymore. We get the content from the community. But not only that, but uh, by building the content, the community supports the interaction of its members and, and builds this reputation for the people who are active, people who are productive, people who uh, uh, are offering more to the community. Um, and that's uh, where the woofy factor comes in. And then uh, that well uh, sort of qualified content then is spread outside the community, which attracts more people into the community. Uh, so you have trust agents who uh, will retweet uh, connections, who will send uh, content to uh, social media platforms such as Dig and, and Reddit. And so you, you basically have a way to advertise and leverage the content that you built inside the community uh, in, in, out in the larger digital world. So all of these things are parts of what uh, DigitalOcean is going to be doing in certain ways, in novel ways, uh, for the, uh, the academy, at least in ocean sciences. One of the main pr uh, issues that, that, uh, that I think Clay Shirky brings is how every piece of software is, is, is a bargain between the software developer and the user. And social networking software creates a whole range of bargains 
uh, dealing with uh, identity and privacy, uh, with, uh, again, with WUFI or, or reputations and reliability. And, uh, you know, in some ways, uh, when you're working with professionals in, in the academy, you want to make sure that uh, the bargains you make with them are well considered and, uh, and are not broken. You can't break these uh, later on. You know, we're not going to build DigitalOcean and then sell it to uh, Rupert Murdoch, for example. Well, I suppose if Rupert Murdoch did offer us enough money, you know, you'd have to think about it. No, no, we wouldn't. No, we wouldn't do that because when we build something like DigitalOcean, at some point we're going to, it's, it's going to be open source and it's going to be basically handed over to the community uh, itself to run. So the question then that we have, and this is a computer science question, it's an engineering question, is how do we code uh, in, a, in a better way uh, to build for uh, democratic, you know, bottom-up interactions and ownership inside a social network. Right now, you know, if you belong to Facebook, like 300 million other people, you put your content in there, you have your 2,000 photos, you've got the images of the party and the duct tape and the tequila and things like that. But that all belongs to Facebook, right? And, and at some point, the people at Facebook are going to sell that to uh, maybe not Rupert Murdoch because he bought MySpace and look what happened to that, but someone. And uh, they're going to take their billions and go away. And all your content's going to belong to someone else, but it doesn't belong to you. So in DigitalOcean, the content belongs to you. And uh, so you can put it in there, you can be certain it's going to stay there, um, and uh, when you want to take it out, you can remove it. Um, so, and go somewhere else if you want. And it's going to interact too with uh, the, their institutional repositories that are being made at, at places like UCSB, and pro probably every campus has a digital repository now. And if you're a professor, they want you to put your stuff in there, and, you know, which is, has an interesting, interesting quality about it, because if you, you know, get a job somewhere else, your content stays here. So uh, with uh, DigitalOcean, your content stays with you. So, uh, but you can have a copy of it that you can send to your university. Now, we're, I think we're all sort of amazed still by Wikipedia and, uh, and what Wikipedia has really evolved into uh, after some, you know, early criticisms of the qualities of it. Um, and, and now, you know, after two and a half million person hours, uh, I think uh, there's, there's really no denying that Wikipedia has done something that uh, could not have been done by another sort of encyclopedia like Britannica. And there's no way that anyone could have paid for Wikipedia um, or made something that's as uh, sort of useful at some level as Wikipedia is, uh, except for crowdsourcing. And uh, I think uh, there are lessons here for science. There's lessons here for the academy uh, in terms of uh, you know, becoming more involved in, in, uh, uh, in opportunities such as Wikipedia. If you don't like it, well, fix it. Uh, kind of thing, but also taking that same crowdsourced uh, model, that same network effect, and uh, using it for your research. Another example is the commons. Um, there are uh, dozens and dozens of libraries that have uh, public domain digital images, um, and uh, uh, they're sitting in, in uh, repositories, uh, and they have no clue, really, what those images are about. They stored them, um, but they don't have the time uh, or the inclination to adequately uh, describe them. So uh, uh, the people at Flickr, uh, particularly George Oates, uh, uh, was working with the uh, National Archive and said, well, if you, if you bring a copy into Flickr, we'll send it out to the uh, sort of Flickrverse, and uh, uh, we'll let a few million uh, users um, look at them and tag them and uh, so that started uh, what they call the commons. And so uh, now uh, a large number and growing number of institutions are adding their public domain photos into the commons where they can be tagged uh, and searched, which they couldn't be before. So this is another example of, of how if you provide the right software uh, service, uh, you, can, you can build something with a crowd uh, that works. And let me get back to Woofy, because uh, it's probably, has anyone here heard of Woofy before? Okay, one or two. Yeah, it, it's a word that comes out of science fiction, okay? Um, 
But a lot, of, a lot of good things come out of science fiction in terms of you know, engineering tasks, like space travel. Right? Space travel was well described in science fiction decades before we, we got into space. Uh, robotics, right? They were talking about robots decades before uh, we built our first real robots. Um, hoverboards, right? It's, it, it's been decades since uh, uh, we first heard about hoverboards. And uh, wait a minute, uh, any engineers in here? OK, hoverboards. What's up, guys? And we're still waiting for hoverboards. And let me tell you, one really good working hoverboard, and we will forgive you for the jet packs and the flying cars. OK, so, but anyway, Wolfie is, uh, uh, is a, uh, um, it's, it comes from a story about an economy of reputation. Uh, the Cory Doctorow wrote called um, Down and Out in the, in the Magic Kingdom in 2001. It's available online for free. And it's really talking about uh, how reputation is going to take over as an economic force. And I was thinking, well, this is very close to what happens in, in the academy anyway. I mean, the academy is, is sort of rife with reputation, marking, um, you know, building, trashing behaviors. Um, this is what, you know, tenure's about. This is what, you know, professional societies are all about, you know, marking and rewarding, uh, you know, giving prizes and notes and rewards and getting on boards and editorial situations and just building reputation. I mean, the Academy's been doing this for 350 years. Um, but it's really been doing it the same way for 350 years. So uh, the point is that all these systems of, of reputation that are coming out of places like eBay and Amazon uh, and other places are, are going to uh, impact, I don't know if, if infect is the right word, uh, the systems of reputation uh, that academics use. Already we have uh, tenure decisions being based not on uh, the number of articles you've written or books, but on the citations off these articles and books. And it's a small step from citations then when you have systems like DigitalOcean where people can comment on the articles and rate the articles where you're going to get actual uh, distributed user feedback on everything you've written and the accumulated uh, you know, sort of measure of that feedback is going to be what gets you tenure. And I, I can say this is probably what's going to happen. Now, that's the woofy inside the system. And that's, that's sort of the, I think, the more um, arcane side of this. Uh, the, but the really sort of important and sad side of it is that science as an activity uh, has been losing its woofy uh, in the general population now for, I don't know, eight years? For, for quite a while. And so, uh, you know, when we, when we read that 39% of the U.S. residents um, believe, I don't know whether they use that word, actually, in evolution, um, you know, we should be alarmed, we should be dismayed, and we should be ready to, you know, see what we can do as academics, as scientists, to uh, resolve this situation, to, you know, fight back, to be in the public eye in a much greater way. Now, Part of this has to do with, uh, you know, with being behind. But if you're behind, you know, you can always, you can always catch up. Okay. Now this is Ashton Kutcher, and Ashton Kutcher, you know, Ashton Kutcher's actor, television star, um, you know, you know, he'll punk your house, he'll do things. Okay. He has three million. Well, it's now it's more like three million seven hundred thousand people following him on Twitter which I think is more than the circulation of the New York Times. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, Ashton's got a lot of, a lot of woofy growing here. And, and uh, so the day before the, op the home opener for uh, the, the, the Packers and Bears, you know, he, he thought he'd leave his office on the, on the corner of uh, La Brea and uh, Sunset and, and head for Lambeau Field, but he didn't have any tickets. So he just tweets out, I need four tickets. And next thing we know, he's, he's at the game. And he, he and three friends are, you know, are, so Whoopi comes in handy every once in a while. And, and so the problem is that Ashton Kutcher has 3,700,000 followers, and the National Science Foundation has 8,000 followers. So there's, there's a whole lot of catching up to do. Um, and DigitalOcean is going to be one of the platforms that helps us do this. And so we're going to take 20,000 
ocean scientists within the network, talking to each other, collaborating, coordinating, uh, writing, uh, pre-publishing, uh, you know, marking, tagging photos, and, and building resources. And then we're going to have streams in between them and the two million ocean enthusiasts who are outside the network, who also have photos and videos, who have local knowledge of places in the ocean, who have a lot to offer. And uh, uh, so we're going to see if we can't uh, build this, this, this whole interconnected network of ocean information uh, uh, you know, to basically save the oceans. And we're going to do this professionally. We're going to do it with, with uh, sort of a new generation of social networking tools uh, that, that focus on code, content, and community, and also on the infrastructure, the data, and the society inside the network. So the social aspects of being in the network are going to be very important to us. So um, in terms of innovation, I, I, you know, I'm really happy to report that DigitalOcean is happening here at UCSB because uh, it, it has the chance to, to really change a lot uh, of how the academy works. Um, I think you're going to really see uh, the, the, the whole peer review system opening up in new ways. No one wants to get rid of peer review as a concept. The way it's done right now um, is, is too prone to, uh, uh, to failure in, a very, in various ways. And, uh, and I think we're going to see uh, revolutions in it. Uh, we need to have science on the web. We need to have science out there. We need to have public intellectualism as part of, uh, of what we do. And if we can help build the tools so that it's part of your everyday workflow, so you don't have to spend extra time to do it. If we can create opportunities for when you publish something, it goes out to 20 different places, well, then we're helping that happen. Again, it's, it's, not, in the, it's not in the words, you know. It's, it's in the research. And so uh, we're going to help build uh, tools that, that enhance research, uh, data sharing, and other things. And if you're not an ocean scientist, if you're, you know, a uh, social scientist or an engineer or something, we'll take the open source software and give it to you, and you can use it to build your own community. Thank you.